They're so finely tuned into their environment. Changes in oxygen, changes in water temperature, they're clocking all of that. I can think of a few, uh, a few stories where I've, it's been absolutely bitterly cold and you know the bobbin's pulled up and you've, uh, I've had a fish on and, and it makes you want to go and I think if you, you, you just hang on to those, it's just, the chances are you're not going to get a bite but when you get a bite, to hold a big carp in January or February is a very, very special moment and you know, we live in a world now of Instagram where our people seeing pictures of lovely carp all the time but to have one of those big fish and get it out on that really cold day when it's it's almost painful to hold the fish because it's so cold that that makes you want to go fishing definitely okay sire so firstly thank you for letting us come to your wonderful fish farm it's an absolute pleasure Elliot. lovely to have you guys here we look out the window it's warm, raining. Miserable. Well, yeah, but quite lovely for a car plane. Yeah, it's nice and mild, definitely. And deceiving to think that we're only a couple of days away from December as we sit down and have this chat. And the next few months are going to be... The dark months. Brutal, cold, horrible months. Yeah. And over the next year, I want to interview you four times, this being the first one, and the subject for the first one, the winter. We'll cover the four seasons and... We've all got opinions on things, but you're a man who has the scientific backing to back up what you say and probably put wrong a few, put right a few wrongs that other people well, may think. We'll give it a spin. I'm sure we we'll come up with a few interesting pointers anyway. So uh, the first thing I'd like to ask you is if you could describe the winter in one word, what would you choose? Tricky. Tricky. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I'd, I'd back that up. It's a tricky time of the year to go fishing on a number of levels. It, 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 the, the days are very short, it's dark, it's cold, it's miserable. And as an angler, I hate packing up in the pouring rain and I hate unpacking my gear when it's still wet from the last trip. It's not such a pleasant experience. So you, you've got to have some metal about you to go at all in the winter, I reckon. Yeah, I think the fun can be sucked out of it if you're of the wrong mindset and you're expecting uh, the wrong things. It's going to be tough. Yeah. And the reason for all that, the reason it's hard in winter is pretty much down to the cooling of water. If the water didn't get cold, I'm sure we'd enjoy lovely fishing as we do throughout the summer. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, w firstly, let's just look at where carp come from. Carp are non-native to this country. Uh, they come from an area close to Turkey. That's where they originate from. Uh, and carp have evolved to uh, live in a warm water environment. They're often described in aquacultural textbooks, fish farming textbooks, as a warm water species. Uh, and we are in uh, the UK, we are on the northern edge of their limit, if you like, of, of what they can naturally survive. So it's, this is a cold environment for a carp. Given a choice, if you could interview a mirror carp or a common carp and say what temperature would you like, they would pick 27 degrees centigrade. That would be their biological optimum for growth. Some strains of carp will be lower than that, some strains higher. But if you aimed at 27, upper 20s, that's the temperature they want to be at. So in the UK, when we've got freezing cold nights, minus fours, minus fives, and the water in the lake has become super chilled, that represents incredibly cold water for a warm water fish. Yes. It's quite interesting because if you, those of you, uh, the viewers that go pike fishing or perch fishing or grayling fishing will know very well that those species will feed even on those coldest of days. They're cold water species. They've evolved to live in the UK. A carp hasn't. So for a carp, in January, when there's frost on the ground, it is going to be thinking, oh my word, it is really, really cold today. And that has a massive impact on their metabolism and their biology. Yeah, it's on their overall well-being throughout those months. Yeah, it's, it's extreme cold. So the cooling of the water, how does, how does that process, you know, we've all learned about it at school, but yeah. you forget it. Okay, well, the water is actually very good at retaining heat, believe it or not. Um, so water takes quite a long time to cool down. And we've all sat in October and marveled at beautiful sunrises and big sort of twists of mist coming off the lake. And that is when the water is still warm within the air above it. 
But as we go towards late autumn and into winter, we get some cold, cold nights and that strips the temperature off the surface of the lake. So the heat is lost from the surface. Uh, and then if you add wind to that as well, that's mixing the water. And again, it's further bringing warm water up to the surface, which then sheds its heat. So the difference between the lake and the air, the bigger the difference, the quicker the water will cool down. Um, so water will gradually chill down as we come into, into winter. And obviously when we get to that period of those first few really savage frosts, uh, which we've had this uh, winter in November, that takes a lot of that heat out of the lake. And at this point now, you said it's nice and mild outside and it's raining, but the water is going to be pretty cold. We're probably going to be significantly below 10 degrees now. So for a carp, that's cold water. And within a lake, there's always, there's layering, isn't there? You know, you've got... Yeah, depending cold. on the, the weather conditions. So if we, uh, the wind is a big mixer. If you think of the wind as a big, big stirring spoon going around, it's mixing the water body up. Um, so in windy conditions, the lake will be far more mixed through than it will be in still conditions. So if you have a still day that's warm, the, the surface layer may warm up quite well. However, if you get some wind on it, that will mix that water around. And how quick can that happen? You know, how quick can water from the bottom that's cold, how can that rise? Is that, is that an in Yeah, if you get a big wind, that's quite quick. So anybody right. that's fished on a big gravel pit, you, know, you get a wind blowing and your lines suddenly start to move around to the side, don't they, at the undertow? Well, if you think about that in a 100 acre pit, there's a huge volume of water that's moving around. So the wind on the surface pushes a lot of water along the surface. And then of course, conversely, deeper down, the water's going back the other way. So there's a big turning over. So a wind is, is a great mixer. As a fish farmer, I like to have wind over the lakes on the farm because it helps to mix the water. It's really, really important for oxygenating the water. Which would explain why the small lakes that are completely surrounded by trees, set down lower in the ground, they don't seem to react to the weather we get throughout the winter as well as the, the bigger, yeah, more open exactly. lakes do. Exactly. Um, okay, so on average throughout the, throughout the winter, and like you say, this will change dependent on weather, where do you feel the most comfortable layer of a lake would be? Top, middle, bottom, oh, or is that's that? That's like how long is a piece of string. That is entirely down to the weather conditions. So we've got to go back to the fact that the, we know the carp like warm water, 27 degrees centigrade, given the choice, that is where they'd end up. Now, obviously in January and February, there isn't a place on the lake that's 27 degrees centigrade, but I guarantee you, given the chance, the fish will put themselves into the warmest environment they can find, or the most stable one. So here at the fish farm, in our holding tanks, in January, when it's bitterly, bitterly cold and all of our pipe work is frozen, if the sun comes out, the carp in the holding tanks will all be on the sunny side. So they'll, they'll move in a holding tank, in that really uh, sterile environment within the fish farm holding tanks, they will move about to try and put themselves in the warmest water. So half a degree, a quarter of a degree to a carp is significant. So if you're thinking about your fishing, in the winter, then you, you should be thinking, right, it's the sun shining today, where might the fish go to be in that sunshine? They will make the most of that opportunity. So it might be two foot deep. They might go into two foot of water to try and maximize that heat, to try and gain as much heat as they can. But obviously at night, if it's two foot deep, it'll lose heat very quickly, so they might drop back down. So you know, you've got to look at the various conditions on a given day or a yeah. given week and say, right, the weather's been doing this for a few days, where might the carp be? So would, you, would it be safe to say that there's probably quite a good chance that particularly on the brighter days throughout the summer, the carp are up off the bottom? Closer uh, yeah. to the surface, closer yeah, to the Yeah, surface. I mean certainly, uh, to give you a nice example here, we have one of our big production ponds called Medhome North. Now that has got some shallow bays. Now everything you think about going carp fishing in January or February, you wouldn't go and sit and fish in 18 inches of water. But I guarantee you, if we get a sunny day in February, it can be frosty on the ground, that the, one of the big bays will be absolutely black with fish. They literally all go up there to try and get that little tiny bit of extra heat that's available, and at night they've all gone again. So, you know, you, 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 could, be, you could say that it's actually you want to be quite mobile in the winter and try and move where the fish go. Obviously on various lakes, there's going to be different factors. So, you know, if you've got a lake that's 10 foot deep all over, then you've got to try and work out where within that environment the fish might be. But it's certainly if you've got shallow bays, quiet corners, then it's worth you know, having a look in those. How does the water temperature actually affect the carp? You know, because it does more than just, it doesn't just make them cold, does it? It does more, it does more no, than No, I that. mean, the, 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 it, uh, the carp, like most, well, like fish are cold-blooded. So what that means in terms of their 
And it's difficult for us to imagine that because we're warm-blooded. Our, our body temperature is pretty much constant from, you know, from the day we're born to the day we die. Um, but for a fish, um, it, its temperature is totally dictated by the water in the environment around it. So if you take a carp, if the water is five degrees, then the carp will be five degrees. If the water goes up to five and a half degrees, then the fish will warm up to five and a half degrees. And of course, they're very, very finely tuned into feeling that change. And um, now, as we've already alluded to, cold water chills the carp right down. And that means their metabolism is slowed right, right down. So at 27 degrees centigrade, their metabolism is going flat out. It's that they're as efficient as they can be at digesting food. Um, at four or five degrees, they're chilled right down and their whole body process is going very, very slowly. So their oxygen requirement is very low. Um, their ability to digest food is reduced. Their gut transient time, so that's the time from eating the food to it passing out the vent, can be really, really uh, quite a long period, maybe three or four days in very cold water. Um, so everything about them is effectively like turning the volume right down, just having it a tiny little click off naught. They're, they're still alive, but they're almost in suspended animation. So they're, you know, that body, all the body processes, including their ability to see, their ability to hear, um, they become effectively, as I say, it's difficult to think of it from a human point of view because we can't imagine, but they, they, their whole life is slowed right, right down. Wow, the eyesight was, you just mentioned yeah, there. Yeah, de definitely. The research suggests that their eyesight deteriorates in the winter. Um, so if we take, uh, let's say, a carp in August, it's effectively at its most finely aware, it's acutely aware of its environment, its eyesight's fantastic, its sense of hearing is fantastic, its sense of smell is fantastic. It's, you know, you step onto the, the bank of the fishery with a big boot and the carp go, ah, oh, there's a carp angler in the car park. In January, you can swim down into some of these lakes in your dry suit on the fish farm and you can literally go into the reed bed and you can pick up a live carp and you can hold it in your hands and it just sits there and very slowly its mouth's opening and closing and it's almost like it doesn't even know it's out of the lake. Wow. It, you know, they just don't. And we harvested a pond last week. It was a really cold night and while we were getting the fish out, they were, they were literally torpid. You were just picking them up and just putting them in the slings to take them out of the pond. They weren't even, they just no kicking at all.